Okay, now to really to be successful in the standard you need to be able to do Lewis diagrams. There's a systematic way of doing these and if you follow it you should get them right every time. Now they're also known as electron dot diagrams so don't let that confuse you. Now atoms when they form molecules or compounds um, are connected to other atoms. Now sometimes the connections very straightforward in terms of for instance hydrogen is joined to another hydrogen atom that shows the bond between them and sometimes they're bonded with a central atom with atoms coming off them like this this is a way of showing how atoms are bonded and where the electrons are and this is very useful for us understanding a lot of other things in chemistry so it's important to be able to draw them if you follow the system of doing it, you'll get these right. Example, if you're asked to draw the Lewis dot diagram or the Lewis diagram of um, SO2, sulfur dioxide, the first thing you'd do is look at the number of valency electrons. These are the electrons in the outer shell only. Okay, so that should be straightforward. And you look at sulfur, it's in group 16, so it's going to have six electrons. Oxygen's also in the same group. So it's going to have six electrons, but because there's two of them, we need to multiply this by two, and that becomes 12 electrons. So the total number is 18 electrons. Okay. The second step is to place the atoms so that you have a central atom. Now obviously if there's only two atoms, such as say HCl or O2, or Cl2. If there's only two atoms, you just place them next to each other. For instance, you just do that, you just do that, or you just do that for chlorine. So they're fairly straightforward in how you'd place them. Now, there are some rules for trying to work out what's a central atom, and they're actually more complex than this, or they apply to a concept that we haven't learned about yet. So. These ones generally will get you through almost every case. The central atom is the atom that's going to be the one atom that's by itself. Now this is going to make more sense once we start doing a few examples, so don't get too stressed if this doesn't make too much sense right at the second. Any hydrogens in the formula and any halogens. Now remember a halogen is either chlorine, bromine or fluorine. Okay, that's in group 17. Anything from group 17 in other words. They're usually on the outside, so that means they're not a central atom. Okay? And carbon will always be a central atom. Okay? So, right, if we look at this example though, sulfur dioxide. Sulfur is an atom by itself, so we're going to consider that to be the central atom. We then just place the atoms next to each other with the central or around the central atom. Okay, so we've got sulfur and we're just going to place the oxygens on either side of it, around it. I suppose you could put them to top and bottom, but that just would be a little silly. It's easy to do them next to each other. Now we're trying, the goal of doing Lewis diagrams is to try and have eight electrons around every atom to get a full outer shell. Remembering that in this case, if you have any electrons between two atoms, they're going to be shared. Okay, So we draw electrons as dots. We can do uh, a pair of electrons. So this line here equals two electrons, this one here. You can do them just like this, but generally speaking, most people, as soon as you draw these central atoms, you just do one line between them. What that shows is that there's a bond between the S and the O, and that represents two electrons. Okay. Now I'm going to try and get, I've got 18 electrons in total, so now I try and place them around the atoms in turn. Now here I've done two electrons here, two electrons here, two electrons here, and there's two electrons from the bond, and that means we have eight electrons in total around the oxygen. Okay. 
Now, if I place electrons around the sulfur, now notice I'm always putting them in pairs. Electrons are always placed in pairs. Okay, so that means around the sulfur now, I also have eight electrons. I've got two, it's two from here that makes four, another two here that makes six, another two here that makes eight. So that means that now has eight electrons as well. Now how many electrons have I used up to now? If we were to count them, this is t two electrons here, four electrons, six electrons, eight electrons, ten electrons, twelve electrons, fourteen electrons. I have four electrons left that I can place. So if I put them in here, I've now used all my electrons. And what you'll notice around this oxygen is I've got two electrons here, four electrons now, and six. So this doesn't make eight electrons. So when this happens, we put something in called a double bond. That means instead of sharing the typical two electrons here, we're going to make it share four. Okay, so this mean, so this means we have to kind of start again and retry it and see if we can make it work. Now notice I've only put one double bond in. You only add one double bond on it at a time. Now, if I can't get this to work, the next step I'll do is to put a double bond in on the other side. Now you can in fact move to doing something called a triple bond, which is this and that would represent six electrons in a shared bond. You will only ever do that after you've tried putting in a double bond. Okay, And if there's an atom on either side like this of the central atom, you would put a double bond on either side before you went to this step. Okay, But let's try and see how this goes. Now, I'm going to put in an electron here, an electron here. And the reason I've just put four, now it doesn't matter, I could have just as easily put these over here. And that would have been fine. And what I now have is I've got two electrons here, two electrons here, and there's four in here, and that means there's eight around this oxygen. Okay, so if we carry on, notice I only have to put two electrons around the sulfur because there's four electrons here. There's two electrons in this bond here, that makes 4 plus 2 is 6, and 2 is 8. So that sulfur can sense 8 electrons around it. Now that's, I don't use, like to use a word, but now that's happy as well. Now this oxygen on this side needs a further 6 electrons. Now I'm just going to place these. Now one of the most common mistakes is to put too many electrons in, more than you've actually got. We have 18 electrons, so we need to check that that's what we've got. Okay, so if we count these, we'll see we've got two here that we start with, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And when we count the electrons around individual atoms, this one's got two here, four here, six here, and that means another two, so that's got eight. Now the next one to, to it has got two again. Notice I can still count that because it's shared between the oxygen and the sulfur. So there's two there, four there, and there's another four here that's shared between this one on this side, and that means that's got a total of eight it can sense. Now and again, the oxygen on the other side, that's going to have two there, two there, and then it's got four in the middle here, and that means it's got eight. So that is that structure complete. Now of course that looks a complete mess, so we wouldn't draw it like that in an exam. We draw it like this. doesn't matter which side this double bond here goes on. Okay, and it doesn't matter if I put this pair that I've just drawn on the top, on the top or the bottom. So, and that's that structure, and that's that complete. Now, just to give you an idea of where to get started on some other types of atoms, I'll just get rid of that. If we had CH2O. which one is the central atom in each case because the first step remember is you'll be counting up the valency electrons for this then you've got to decide which one's a central atom well 
Carbon is always the central atom. That's kind of one of the things you should know. And hydrogens are always on the outside. That means there are two atoms by themselves, but carbon is always going to be a central atom. So this would be the central atom. Again, carbon's always going to be the central atom. Halogens are on the outside. This is a hydrogen. It's going to be on the outside, and it, they're not by themselves. This atom's by itself. Carbon, always going to be a central atom. Okay? So just making sure you have the central atom... And then, of course, the first step after, or the next step after that, is just to place a bond. Now, one point I need to make is that whenever you have a hydrogen, because hydrogens only need two electrons, as soon as you place one bond to a hydrogen, you're finished with it. You don't need to do anything else to it. What do I mean? Phosphorus has got five electrons. Hydrogen only has one electron but times by three, because there's, well, there's three of them, means it's got a total of eight. Phosphorus is going to be the central atom, so if we draw that out, and we immediately just put hydrogens with bonds next to them, as soon as we've done this H bond here, that means two electrons. That means this hydrogen is happy. It does not need eight electrons. It only needs two electrons to get a full outer shell. Remember when you're looking at atoms and they've got the nucleus? And that first orbital can only hold two electrons. That's this case here. That's why it only needs two. Now we've used two, four, six electrons. That means we've got two left. We place them here. That means the phosphorus, it kind of consents eight electrons. It's got two here, two here, two here, and two here. And the hydrogens are okay because they've got two, 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 as soon as you draw that bond. CH4. Carbon is going to be the central atom. Okay, as soon as you draw H, 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 now have you used the right number of electrons? Carbon has got four electrons. Hydrogen has got one electron times by four equals eight. Well, it equals four plus four is eight, if you know what I mean. And that means as soon as we do this bond to the hydrogen, we don't have to, we, sh we can't draw extra electrons around it. That's not going to be a good thing to do because that bond means it's got two. It's done. The carbon in the middle, it senses the two from here, two from here, two from here, two from here, so it's got eight electrons and it's finished. What about this one, CH3Cl? Which one's the central atom? Well, that's carbon. Carbon is the one that's always the central atom for a start. And hydrogens and halogens, or hydrogens and halogens, I should say, are on the outside. Chlorine has got seven electrons. Hydrogen's got one times by three, because three, and carbon has got four electrons. It's a total of 14 electrons. Carbon is a central atom, and then we just immediately start placing the others around them with just one bond. Okay. Now the hydrogens we don't have to worry about, because as soon as we do that one bond to them, they're finished. Okay. In fact, the carbon's finished because we've got two, four, six, eight around it. Okay, I'll just repeat that. It's got the 2, 4, 6, 8. Now, is a chlorine okay? Well, we've actually, we've used 8 of these electrons, so we have 6 electrons left. So, if we draw these in, if we don't draw these in, this is going to be wrong. So, we've now used all the electrons, and the chlorine go, senses 8 electrons. It's got um, some from the bond here, 2, 4, 6, 8. Now, apart from the colouring in, that would make that structure correct. One final thing. Halogens, which are chlorine, fluorine, and bromine, they never form double bonds. So you're never going to see this. Okay? That does not happen. Now, that's not an important thing in terms of... Because every single structure you get, you'll figure them out without doing this. But if you ever draw a double bond to a halogen, you have got it wrong. You've done something incorrect. Okay? Follow this procedure, and you should be fine. Okay? Um, just have to be systematic. All right?